welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna do something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna do a product review. So I've had the Nikon uh, Z 24 to 200 mil lens on my camera now for uh, just over one year. Uh, it's hardly ever left my camera, if I'm being honest. The, um, it's been perfect. It's been to Iceland twice. We went to Madeira, it's been all over the coast. It's been around the UK. Uh, and looking at my stats, I've taken 2,800 photos with this lens, uh, which I think is amazing. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the challenges with this lens though, and some of the things to be aware of. I think it's great. I love it for hiking because it's quite lightweight. Gives the flexibility. You've got the focal lane range, which is really good. But then um, what am I going to do next? Because although I've used this exclusively, I think it's now time for an upgrade. So I'll talk a little bit about that at the end as well, about why I'm upgrading and what I'm going to use that for. I'm going to be going away in probably the, in the next five or six weeks uh, on my honeymoon. And I'm going to be taking this lens, even if I do get a new lens. I think the main thing will basically be down to size and travelling. Because it's not going to be a photography trip, I'm just going to want to pack lightweight and just have my camera and my lens, which is where I think the 24 to 200 is perfect. So let's let me show you some photos, different focal lengths, and you can make your own decision on if this is the right lens for you. One of the challenges of this lens is edge to edge sharpness. Now it's not the S line lens, so it's not the better quality, but I think the compromise has always been worth it for me, and this is why this was the first lens I decided to invest in. Once I bought my camera, I took the kit lens off and went straight for this. I've had the kit lens in my bag ever since, and I've never used it. I take it on trips, especially when I've been going to abroad with only this lens and the kit lens. If anything ever happened to this, touch wood, nothing ever has. But I've always wanted that second lens. I don't want to be without a lens when I'm, when I'm in some of these places, especially when I've gone to take some of the photos. So I think it's been great for that. Uh, I've just sold my kit lens, actually because uh, I'm going to upgrade. Now, what I found interesting with this, with the photos I've taken, at the 24, I don't notice too much. I know it's a little bit, but if you look here, this was actually taken at 75 mil. And you can see there's a lot of, uh, I'm making a lot of detail around the edges. Love this photo. I actually think this gives the best dynamic for this photo. So it's probably the best, uh, worst example for that. But I still think it gives the uh, an idea of some of the kind of uh, lack of sharpness around the edges for some of these prints. I have printed bigger. I'll get some of my free prints out in a bit and kind of show you how that looks like uh, when it's blown up. I think when you are shooting at 24 mil, I think you're shooting at an aperture of 5.6 or at 8. That range, I think, is really good. Obviously at eight, you're gonna get the, uh, the the most sharpness throughout the whole image. At 5.6, you won't, the edges will be softer and that's fine, but that's, that's where you'll get the sharpest uh, pictures. If you wanna go for 30 mil, just looking at my settings, I normally shoot at 5.6, that's for the, the sharpest aspects on this, which does make it a bit tricky. You can do F8, anything above F8 starts to become a little bit more challenging just for this lens. Uh, and you can start to really notice it, not on A4 or A3, but when you start to go A2 prints uh, and bigger, that's really where you start to notice the details. If you're fo focus stacking, I think it's less of an issue because you can get a lot more of those details and you can edit those out and post. So all things to bear in mind when you look at this lens. For my style of photography, it's been fantastic because I can focus stack these and make sure I'm getting those uh, that sharpness in where I need to. But for other people, they don't might not want to do all that work or just have the options. And it's actually, when we go through my stats, it's really interesting to see actually where I shoot with this lens the most, because you'll be surprised. I was definitely surprised. Switching over to Lightroom, you can see here that if I choose my 24 to 70, sorry, 24 to 200 lens, I shot just under 8,000 images. And if you look at all the focal lengths, I've done uh, 106 different focal lengths. But you can see quite a lot of them have been shot at the 24mm. There's quite a lot in here to select from. So if I was to filter this by, say, my four-star images, you can see some of the four-star ones. So some of my favourites here would be this one. In Cornwall, it's an amazing image. 
absolutely love this one. You can see edge to edge sharpness all the way around, a little bit down here. Uh, but because it's a sunset, I think we get away with it uh, a lot more than we would do on some other photos. But I think in general, pretty good. The other one was this one in Iceland, actually my favourite spot in the end. You can really notice it up here. You can notice the sharpness is just lacking a little bit up here, as opposed to somewhere in the middle where you can see the beautiful raindrops, uh, not raindrops, water drops. And yeah, along the side here as well, you can see it's just a little bit softer on the edges than I would have liked and down in the corners. Beyond that though, absolutely amazing. It's, I've printed this up huge. I've printed this as a 36 by 24, and this looks in incredible on my wall. So nothing to complain about from there. A little bit more of a different one for this one. This was also shot at 24 mil. This was obviously photo stacked. This was a combination of four different photos. Uh, five actually different photos uh, put together. These were actually shot uh, in portrait and most across from there. So you can see that this does correct a lot of some of the softening rounds there. So we get a little bit around here um, and a little bit on the edges down here, but you barely notice this. And I've had this printed at 36 by 16 and it just looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic lens. You're not carrying too much around. Awesome. Top range is at 24 mil. So going back to what I said about the 24, I've had not shot too many at 30. I've got one at 29, which I think was, this was a morning, a winter's morning. A little bit hard to tell on this one because the style of this and I've done some sort of customised vignetting around this as well, so it's a bit harder to see around the edges. So not the best example, but if I was to go to one at say 34, you can see a little bit more in this one here. Details. It's a lot sharper in the edges here. You can see right around here. Detail is absolutely incredible. And around on this side as well, the bluebells. So you can see it's really started to make its own around the 30 to 35. I think it's absolutely incredible. Somewhere around 36 as well. Now this was in Dartmoor. This was one of my favorites. This looks amazing big as well. But look at the details in there. This is at 100% 100, 100 zoom. Just the details all around the image. Absolutely incredible. So if you are gonna have this lens, around the 30 to 35 is, I think, perfect. And that was taken at F8. So it is, it is possible. Now these are all my four star plus images, so you can see uh, that there's not too many examples here, but I just wanted to show you this as well. So this was at 50 mil, this was shot at F11. Now the style of this, I obviously wanted this to be a bit more blurred out. I wanted the foreground here to, to show some depth of field, because look at the mountains in the background, the mountain ranges. It, this works really well on that, and I use the lens to my advantage here. So I think as long as you know your gear, you can kind of know how, how best to shoot some of these images. Uh, I but this is still one of my favourite shots from Dira, uh, but yeah, it goes to show f f eleven fifty three mil, absolutely spot on for that. If I go up the ranges a little bit more, I don't have too many. I've got some at seventy nine. Of a lot of these are volcano ones. The reach for this was necessary. But if you look at the details there, this is uh, this is really good. This was one image, this wasn't photo stacked. But if you look at some of the details in there, still really good at the 80, pretty much the 80 mil mark. I think the drama here and the, the smoke helps with the scene a little bit. The only thing I could be a bit critical about is in the corner down here, where there's a little bit more softness. But I've been able to correct most of that. And actually in this image, yeah, again, I don't want the focus on the edges. I want the focus on the big glowing orange thing in the middle there. The woodlands, as I showed earlier, is a little bit more of an interesting example for that. You can see there's a lot more softening around here and a lot more blur. A little bit of a shame, really, because this is probably my favourite bluebell photo. I struggled a lot this year with just where I was to try and get good spacing between the trees for the bluebells. Lots of bluebells just lacking the spacing. But yeah, more around there now, so you really start to kind of see the the, the effect of the, the lens sort of really really kicking in. 
If I now go to slightly higher ones, as you can see, I've not really shot too many. I shoot a bit 80, uh, around the 50 and 35 mark and on the 24. If I go up to 120, there's not really much there either. I took this one on the coastline as well, which I think is, uh, I do love this shot. You wouldn't believe this is in, in England uh, with that beautiful candy floss sunrise. But that's at 200 and you can see down here, it's obviously a lot more noise here. Had to bump my ISO up for this as well, just to kind of get the details in there. And you can see the birds are out of focus as well. This was shot at f6.3 uh, at 120 mil. If you go a couple of stops up from that, this is 145 landscape lens of the volcano. I think fantastic. I, I would have struggled getting these shots without that longer lens. Uh, I will want to go for the uh, 70 to 200 mil Nikon lens. That's going to be my next upgrade, which will really help for shots like this in the future and give me that reach. But if you think about a lens that does all in one, I'm still massively impressed with this. I've printed this out huge and yeah, it still looks really good. And then if I show you another example here, probably not the best edit of this image, but it just gives you an idea. You still capture a lot of that detail and a lot of that sharpness in the center, which is needed. And even down here on the bottoms as well, around the edges, still sees some more of that, which is pretty good considering that it gives you that flexibility for different ranges. So at least around 175, gives you that little bit more reach, still really good quality. There's a lot of uh, camera shape by me at this point. My tripod wasn't set up correctly. And then I'm shooting at 190 to 200 for a lot of this as well. So the 190 allowed me to do a, a panoramic. So this was the panoramic that I've done. This was photo stacked. This was six or seven. This was seven images put together. Uh, these are all taken portrait and moved across and photo stacked. So obviously this is a far bigger image to play with, but a lot of details in there as well. Now, last but certainly not least, the top end of the funnel. So going back to this example earlier, this is slightly more zoomed in than the previous one, just gives you that little bit more um, depth of fields. Tried some focus stacking with some chess pieces. A little bit disappointed with this one, if I'm honest, and this is where I think a more macro lens would be better. Uh, it's a little bit, it's really in focus in the centers, but then you really lose it quickly out there. But still good good fun to play around with i then got some of the bluebells like the individual bluebells and these are incredible at 200 as well the water droplets as you see though i focus issues a bit more at that length just because of the closeness of it uh, and a little bit of grain as you start start to go in there so i think this is where you really start to lose the sharpness of these these images for the details so if you're doing stuff like uh, plant-based or anything where you've got to zoom in quite tricky I think with this lens uh, with the details around that as you can see little bits but like there's really good but on the edges just really out of focus shame really um, but like I say once you know your gear you can know your limitations this was another one that I've taken this is uh, this is just incredible I absolutely love this one everything's blurred out and I don't care about the details. I want it to be soft on the edges because this was a style I wanted for. I wanted all of the details to be in the center here, as you can see, all of the details. So like I say, it's not all about having the crisp edge to edge. It's about how, how you utilize it and what you're gonna be taking your photos for. I don't normally do this style. I normally do landscapes, uh, but I want to do this as a, as a bit of an experiment. And also just when you're in the wheat fields, it's just a bit of fun. Uh, and then a lot more volcano shots. This was one I wanted to call out in particular. Uh, yep, this is the edit. So if you see in here, details are there, but it could be sharper, especially around the corners here. Because it's obviously a night, a night time or later in the evening as well, there's a lot of contrasting colors. So it does make it a bit harder because the lava is so bright, you've got to really under uh underexpose these photos and then kind of bring them out from there so you do lose a bit more detail there but but still good
So I hope you enjoyed that kind of walkthrough. So we need 2,800 photos taken on this lens and, and one year on from that. What's what's my verdict? And I guess the verdict is also on the Z5 because I got that at the same time and took that around, which is also a brilliant camera. And I will do a review on that if, if people are interested and they, they like this one. My review on this is I think it's definitely worth considering uh, and probably worth buying, I think, depending on your needs. I think for the for a hobbyist or for anybody that enjoys photography and doesn't want much weight, this is perfect. You're not going to notice the details. I haven't really noticed the details until I've started to print at large sizes. I've started to sell some of my work. People, yeah, people requesting prints and I've blown quite a few up for the house and some of them you wouldn't notice and others you start to really notice it. So I've got to know my gear a bit more, which I think is my best bit of advice is just know your gear and know your style. So definitely worth considering. I'd actually say buy it as well. I think it's a great lens for that for that all-rounder. If I'm going to go somewhere, I don't want weight, uh, which is becoming more and more common because carrying the tripod around the lenses and now the drone is quite hard work. Definitely worth considering it, if not buying. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to actually be buying the 24 to 70 mil Nikon Z lens. I'm going to go for the F4 for a lot of stuff that I do. If I do the occasional portrait or wedding, I think F4 will be fine for that as well, especially the group shots. I can zoom in as well for the bit of the uh, bit bit of the blur and kind of give that kind of really nice attention to detail that that you might want. I'm then also going to buy the 70 to 200, but I'm going to go for the, the top end, the f 2.8 version on that. Start to do a bit more moon photography, a lot of stuff I like to zoom in on as well, and for the volcanoes that would have been perfect, so it just gives me that all round sharpness. So they're going to be the two that I'm going to buy next. You can pick up the 24 to 70 f4 quite cheap. A lot of the reviews from a lot of people like Nigel and Mads that I watch a lot of their videos on, so talk about that style of lens, and I think it's really good, and I've watched plenty of reviews on it now. You can pick it up on MPB for around £380, which is what I'm going to do, which I think will be really good, especially when I want to take the longer lens for the coastal photography or wildlife and bits and pieces that I'm starting to enjoy a bit more of. So it gives me that option. I'm still going to take this away with me to Barbados in a few weeks. I think this is still going to give me everything I'm going to need and more. It's not too much weight on the camera itself and I don't have to worry about too much. So that will be my suggestion for everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will happily do one on the Z5 and some other reviews if people enjoy this style from me. Thank you for watching. I will leave you with a, uh, a few final edits from some of the photos I went through earlier so you can kind of see the, see the details and make, make your own opinions on those. But until next time, like, subscribe, sign up for notifications to find out about my next video and see you soon. Bye bye.